The front office edition of the Giants Huddle podcast is brought to you by the City College of New York, doing remarkable things. Learn more at ccny.cuny.edu. And we're joined by the special teams coordinator of the New York Giants, Thomas McGahee. And uh, coach, another offseason, another set of issues and challenges and opportunities. Talk about what goes on in the special teams world this time of year. You know, our our primary focus – this time of year is just focusing on the fundamentals and the techniques, you know, trying to figure out what we did last year that was good and build on that. And then the things that we need to get better at focus on that and try and get these, those situations shored up and, uh, and just get better. You know, you, you, you're acquiring, you're, ha- you're, you're acquiring new talent, bringing those guys in, getting them acclimated and, uh, and really trying to forge our units forward and just get them better. And, that, and that's our, you know, our mantra is Kaizen in our room. It's the active continuance improvement. And we're just trying to get better. That's it. What were some of the things, some of the takeaways that you felt you did well last year that you'd still like to improve upon even more? You know, obviously you, you look at probably the highlight of our, our season was Graham Gano. Uh, you know, but we, we need to do a better job as far as uh, protection for him. Um, you know, covering kicks was an issue for us last year, and we need to get better at that. You know, if you look at the past years, uh, prior to last year, we were we were pretty good at covering kickoffs. We were either one or two in the league for the last two or three years, but last year we took a step back. So, you know, we kind of addressed that this morning in the meeting, and that's something that we're really looking at uh, this off season, just getting those pieces in place to get better at covering kicks and punts. And that's something that we have to get better at. As you added new players to your roster, um, and as Joe Shane's bringing in players and Coach Dable, obviously you're weighing in on, hey, do these guys play specials? How well do they play specials? Are those some of the things that are very important when you're looking, especially at the bottom third of your roster? Absolutely. We, you know, we talk about this all the time. You know, you, when you build your roster, you build it from the top down to bottom up. You know, so and you're only as strong as the bottom of your roster because at some point in time, guys are going to get hurt at the top. So you have to have guys in place. Our job is to develop the bottom part of the roster. You know, when I say our job, the special teams coaches, our job is to develop that bottom part of the roster and then graduate them and put them in a position where when they get to the top of the roster, they can make plays. And uh, and if anything happens at the top, but there's no fall off. You know, so again, there's you have to have value on both sides, being able to play on special teams and on offense and defense. You know, it's interesting because uh, offensive coordinators, offensive coaches deal with offensive players, defensive coaches deal with defensive players. You literally have to coach players across the entire roster. What is that dynamic like? You know, it's fun. I just I enjoy being around the players. Uh, I enjoy uh, teaching. I enjoy the relationships. Uh, Because at the end of the day, it's what it's it's about. You know, uh, when your team uh, becomes tight based upon the relationships that you have with the players. And and I I really enjoy being able to coach an offensive lineman, a defensive lineman like Dex and and, and Glow and, and, you know, some of those guys like just being able to interact with them daily. And it's just different, you know, and and, and it makes that, you know, I'm the special teams coach and and my job is special. And I I take that uh, seriously. And I enjoy it. I really do because you get a chance to really touch everyone, even, you know, Tyrod and DJ. And you you get a chance to really interact with those guys. And it's fun. I love it. You know, and as the season goes on, as we as we know, even in the offseason, but as the season goes on, there's constantly cultivation at the bottom of the Mm -hmm. roster. Players get hurt. Guys get waived. Guys get signed. And then you have to incorporate them immediately Mm -hmm. into what you're doing. Um, What are some of the keys to doing that well? Keeping it simple. You know, our, 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 we have a sign in our room that says, do simple better. And that's what has to happen because you have so much turnover. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times, you know, like when you have injuries and you have to, you know, you might get a guy in on Wednesday and you got to have him ready for Sunday. Or you might be told on Friday, hey, this guy got to be ready based upon something that might have happened on Thursday. You know what I mean? So it's always something – uh, that you have to be ready for, and you know we stay ready for that. That's that's kind of our job as as a special team staff. We're always ready to make that midstream adjustment. 
you know, because if, if you can't make the midstream adjustment, <laughs> you'll drown, you know. So we, we got to always be ready, and we keep things simple so that the guys, when we put them out there, they can play fast. One of the areas of emphasis this offseason as far as building of the team is adding some more speed. You guys have added a lot more speed in all different areas. How valuable is that as far as special teams? It's the, to me, it's the most important. Like, when you look at our division and the guys that we're going up against, you know, there's a lot of speed in our division. And for me, when you, when you think about execution and playing at a high level and doing those things, you have to be able to match up within your division. So if you want to win your division, you have to match the speed or surpass the speed in your division. So, you know, acquiring guys that have speed, you know, particularly for me when I think about it, big speed, you want big guys that can run fast because this is a big man's game. Anytime, you, the more speed you can get, the better. You know, it's interesting because um, these kids get drafted and they've been studs at their schools. And even the guys that are undrafted were, you know, frontline starters. How do you test them early this time of year, and especially when training camp arrives, to find out, you know, what they have inside as far as special teams are concerned and how willing and able they are? You won't find out until you put the pads on. Like, we're running around, it's cute, and, you know. Everybody catches it. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> everybody looks great. and then, But you don't find, you don't really find out. Because a lot of guys will show up now, and you're thinking, oh, man, this guy's going to be great. And then there's some other guys who are like, mm, I don't know quite know about that. And then when the pads come on, they flip. The guy that, that's physical, that can run, he shows up because he'll hit somebody. And then the other guy, he looks pretty in shorts, but all of a sudden he disappears because he's not physical. Right. So, again, this is a physical game for big, fast, strong guys. And again, like at this point in time of the year, it's just more of everybody's kind of getting acclimated to trying to figure out, trying to learn. It's more teaching than anything. And you can't, you know, fall in love with a guy in shorts because the game is played in pads. The return aspect of it, with the way the rules continually get changed and with where they move the kickoff to and touchbacks, and there's a higher number of touchbacks. Is punt returner becoming more important than kickoff returner because most of them are sailing through the back of the end zone anyway? It, it's extremely important. You know, um, for us, it's a little different. When I say us, being in the Northeast, like you still have to have a legitimate kick returner because in December and January, you know, into November, the ball's not going to fly as far because it's colder. Now, if, now if you're in the AFC South, yeah, that's a whole different ball game. Like, you're in a dome, it's 80 degrees, it's 70, yeah, it, you know, you might have 100 touchbacks by one kicker, you know, but it's different up here. But I agree with you, the punt returner is extremely important, and he has to be someone that's reliable, uh, he has to be someone that can, to me, uh, put the fear in, in, in the in the heart of, of, of the opponent, you know, and, and that's something that you look for. Uh, because that's that's what we're going against. The teams that are really, really good that that make it into the playoffs, they normally have pretty good punt returners. You know, so you that's an extremely important position moving forward for sure. Just going back to the kicking situation, Graham Gano has been spectacular <laughs> since he came here. Mm -hmm. Um as of now the operation remains the same mm -hmm. as far as snapper, holder, and Graham. How important was it to kind of keep that combination together? And why is Graham appearing to get better as he gets older? Well, it, obviously the battery is, is huge. You know, having that continuity, it gives the kicker confidence. And I think, you know, as Jamie got here and he started to get better as a holder, it gave Graham more confidence. And Graham is, is he's, he's aging like a fine wine. You know what I mean? It's just, he, and he's very confident in who he is and, the beauty about having a veteran kicker is the ability to self-correct and like instantly self-correct, like knowing that, okay, the reason why this kick didn't feel the way it's supposed to feel is because of X, Y, and Z. And he knows exactly what he needs to do and how he needs to do it. And that part of it is huge. You know, when you get into year 13, 14, you know, it, it's, you kind of know what you're doing. And, and it's not it's not that I, I manage Graham. Like, I don't do a whole lot of – when I say coach him, I don't do a whole lot of coaching with him. I, I do more managing than anything. 
you know, because he knows what he's doing. He knows how he's doing. All the guys that I've been around in the past, once you get to this point in your career, like you, you, be, you become a manager of that guy. It's not a whole lot of coaching going on. Coach, we appreciate a couple of minutes. Best of luck this season, and thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thomas McGahee, the special teams coordinator of the Giants, joining us on this edition of the front office edition of the Giants Huddle podcast. It's brought to you by City College of New York, doing remarkable things. Learn more at ccny.cuny.edu.